Welcome to the Coast and Ears Sea Level Rise Challenge Kit. This simple kit allows you to explore some of the potential problems of sea level rise around the UK and ways we can use to try to manage that risk. So here's what you will need for your sea level rise kit. Now you can use materials that you've already got around the home or that you can buy easily. And first you'll need a long plastic box that's reusable so you can use it after the experiment. This needs to be about 30 centimetres long so that you can generate waves and still have your landscape but also no more than 15 to 18 centimetres wide. You don't want it too big. It should be five to six centimetres deep. That's all you'll need for your experiment. Then, in order to make your engineered structures, you'll need some modelling clay, like plasticine. Now, it's useful to have different colours so you can pick out different features in your engineered structures, like embankments or sea walls. The next thing you'll need are your homes or businesses, and these can be made of paper. There's a template in the Coastineers instruction booklet to get you started. They're just folded up and sellotaped together, and it's important that they're paper, so that when they're flooded you can see that they're damaged. Now you can use lots of other materials, but paper straws will be particularly useful for some of your resilience measures you might put in place to protect your homes and make them more resilient. Then you need a lid from another box that fits just inside yours to generate the waves, so this is your wave paddle. And finally, you need your sea, so you can use normal tap water, just coloured blue with watercolour paint, and that can be your seawater. So now let's have a look at some of the impacts of sea level rise. In our kit, we've used some of the modelling clay to build an embankment, designed to today's sea levels, and a different colour modelling clay for our landscape, and you'll need this to push some of the features in you might design later to make your homes more flood resilient. Now let's add some seawater. Add about a centimetre of water to your box to replicate today's sea levels. Now, this is why you use two thirds of your box for the water, so you can generate waves. Now let's put our properties in the floodplain behind. And you can see the waves just lapping up on the embankment there, but they're being mostly kept out and the properties behind are staying dry. Now let's add some more water to simulate sea level rise. So we can show a metre of sea level perhaps with a centimetre in the box. Using your wave paddle, you can generate exactly the same waves that you did before. So the same level of storm, but with a higher sea. And you can see the embankments being overtopped and the floodplain is flooding. Those properties are very definitely being damaged now by that flood water. So what we expect to see with sea level rise is that the same level of embankments we have now could become overtopped more frequently, leading to deeper and more frequent flooding in the floodplain and more damage to people's homes. Now let's keep adding more water. Can you describe what you can see? From this side angle, you can see that as you add more water and the sea becomes deeper, when you apply the same wave action, so the same strength of storm, it starts to overtop that embankment almost immediately and collect in the floodplain behind. So not only is it damaging those properties, but it's leaving lots of flood water behind that embankment as well. And this may need to be pumped or drained away afterwards. How can we reduce these impacts? You could try different structures. You should set a limit for the height of the structures or defences that you build to no more than two thirds of the total box height. Flood risk management structures are expensive to build and maintain, and homes are more desirable with a sea view. It's not always possible to engineer infinitely high defences. The ones shown in our video are bigger, so they're more clear in our demonstration. Here's an example of an engineered structure where, instead of an embankment, we have a straight wall with a wave recurve on top. It's a simple curved concrete section, and it acts by returning the wave energy back out to sea, as you'll see as we demonstrate. So let's generate those waves. Can you see those waves being returned back out to sea by that wave recurve? It's really quite effective. None of that water is going over the wall and flooding the properties behind. And we can have a look from the side as well, and you should see those waves going up the wall and being returned back out to sea by that wave recurve feature, leaving the homes behind quite dry and safe. We could try making the houses behind the embankment more resilient to flooding. Here's an example that you see around the coast. These homes have been put on stilts 
So they've been raised up out of the flood level in the floodplain. As we start to generate those waves, you can see the embankment is being overtopped and the floodplain is being flooded behind, but the homes stay undamaged. And this is one way that communities can live by the coast and be more resilient to flooding. Let's have a look from the side. From the side, you can see as those waves overtop, it starts to fill up the floodplain. But those houses are raised up on those stilts made of your paper straws above the level of the flood water. And so the houses stay quite safe. Can you think of any problems with this though? It might not be great to be surrounded by flood water for a long time, even if your house is safe. We see real examples of this around our coast. Here's a house on stilts at Seawick in Essex. And just around the corner, here are some homes raised up out of the predicted flood level at Jaywick. So, what else could you try? Here's a few ideas to get you started. You might try simulating wetlands like salt marsh to see how that breaks up the wave energy in your kit. You could use Lego with plasticine to make a blockwork wall and see how the waves crash against that. You might use your modelling clay to simulate a beach and see how the waves move up the gentle slope of a healthy beach. And on that beach, you could add wooden structures like revetment and just see if that does anything to break up the wave energy. You could even get inventive with pasta to make blocks to break up the waves. And you do see structures similar to this on our coast for just that purpose. You could use stones to simulate rock armour and see what that does to the wave energy as it comes up against the embankment. Or maybe we could adapt in future and try to move away from living permanently in the floodplain. With each idea, describe what you can see and think about the positives and negatives.